Uh, we are seeing property prices uh, rising in fewer cities in China, but Hong Kong property prices continue to soar despite the curbs. What's going on here? Well, when you don't sell land for 10 years, that's the result. That's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Supply more land, prices will come down. All right, let's uh, dive deeper into our Bloomberg terminal because, as you know, uh, our subscribers get a lot of insight. G hashtag BTV space 2989. This is the tr struggle that we're seeing. As you said, the supply is low, so rents are high, but the retail sector is struggling because the mainline Chinese retail uh, consumers are not necessarily buying. Rents are really, really high. Where does that leave you when you own a number of malls here in Hong Kong? Well, first of all, the malls that Hang Long owns are basically tailored to uh, local people instead of to the mainland people. When the market is good, if you tailor to the mainland rich consumers, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But when they're out, when they're not coming anymore, you get hurt. But in the case of Hang Long, we basically tailor made to local consumers such as in Causeway Bay in Hong Kong. Yeah. So for us, it's less of a deal. But you, you, but you have to take a look at the Gini coefficient here, the wealth disparity that continues to grow between local Hong Kongers and everybody else, you know, in terms of the top tier of the city. Does that put pressure on you? Well, the Gini coefficient is a funny thing. In Hong Kong, housing, for example, is so subsidized. Yeah. Something like 30, 40 percent of people live in houses that are either rented at way below market rent or sold to them at way below market cost. And so as a result, when you take factor in the housing part, the Gini coefficient is a very different picture. Mm. So if you just look at you know that which is published, you'll be misled. You already sold all of their all of your properties in Long Beach in Tai Kok Sui. You have a few in Blue Pool Road in Happy Valley. But you don't have anything else in the pipelines. Why? We've been emphasizing mainland China for the last, what, 15 years or so. And so we have a lot of land bank in the mainland. Uh, we deem it to be perhaps a little bit more suiting to our strategy. Your revenue right now from Hong Kong is still about 70 percent, as opposed to China, which is about 30 percent. Are you saying that that will change very soon? Well, first of all, your numbers are correct, but you have to dive deep, deeper. If you were to just look at rental recurrent income, then it's roughly 50-50. Mm. Slightly more, uh, in fact, uh, in the, on the mainland, 55-45. So we are building our rental portfolio on, on the mainland, and that will absolutely grow. And eventually, it will be more like 70-30, 70, 70 mainland China in terms of rental. But for property that are for sale, we have mostly in Hong Kong. And uh, so, you know, that's how the 70-30 that you mentioned just now came, came about. You know, we... We mark the anniversary, the 20th year uh, since the handover. A lot have changed. In 97, it was the Asian financial crisis. The entire property sector was slumping. Uh, you, stuck f you stood firm on your bets, as a lot of uh, property developers did at the time, and the bet paid off. Where does the next 20 take you? Well, the last 20 years, if you bet on Hong Kong, you're OK. If you bet on mainland China, you're great. We bet on mainland China, but my compatriots who bet in Hong Kong, and we, we did also a little, they're doing fine as well. The next 20 years, I see Hong Kong real estate, residential real estate prices being rather steady. Mm. Uh, the reason, uh, back to perhaps normality compared to other markets, because I believe the present government, today being their last day, and the one t starting tomorrow, uh, under uh, Mrs. Carol Lam, will do the right thing, and that is they will sell more land. Mm. As a result, uh, residential prices will be uh, more steady, uh, less up and down. I think it's a good thing. Because that's not what we're seeing right now, right, Jerry? The reason you're not seeing it right now is because the last 10 years, basically, there's very little land to be sold. Basically, yeah. from 2004 onward, all the way to 2010, 2011, there was nothing sold. And so when you don't have the supply, what do you expect? Housing prices will go through the roof. Hmm. Is that why you're focusing on renovation here in Hong Kong instead of anything else? Because it seems you're not bringing more units on, uh, in the pipeline. It seems that you're just focusing on renovating what you already have. Well, the renovation is really for rental property, for investment property, uh, commercial property, mostly. 
uh, the ones that are for sale, we basically have sold because we just see prices go through the roof. And why not take advantage of it? We may leave something on the table. Prices may go, still go up a little bit. Let's not be too greedy. I think we already sold them a tremendous uh, profit. Profit margin is, you know, 50, 60 percent. Uh, that's pretty good. I think our shareholders will be happy. You know, we talk about the past 20 years, but really we have to take a look at the past decade since 2008 and the, the great financial crisis that really hit hard. It's been a swath of cheap liquidity, cheap money, and now it's tightening. It's getting more expensive. How is that going to hit the markets here? Well, first of all, the loosening of money supply has been so long and so severe that it just, the whole world is awash with money. Yeah. Just a little bit of tightening. The United States raising interest rate just a teeny bit. Uh, everybody's jumping. Do you think it's going to... And these journalists are jumping. <laughs> well, we developers are not jumping. <laughs> well, let's dive into our Bloomberg G hashtag VTV space 225 because this is jumping off the charts right now. Uh, the, the, the rising risk, really, of uh, borrowing costs in Hong Kong, really, um, it appears to threaten the property outlook here. As you can see, as the one-month high bore rate rises, the Hang Seng Property Index is dropping uh, a direct correlation to just how expensive money uh, dampens enthusiasm for the markets. Well, enthusiasm for market is one thing. Mm -hmm. The real economy is another thing. I care for the real economy much more than I care for the market movement. You guys, Bloomberg, uh, many other financial service type, they have to watch the market every day. I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't give a damn about where the market goes. Uh, it's a real economy that I'm interested in. Uh, how you said you don't really care what the markets are doing. However, the Chinese yuan, I mean, you have about 88% of your cash holdings in yuan as of the end of last year. You also have half of your rental revenue coming from China-based investments. How does this hit you? You just roll with the punches. Currency anywhere in the world fluctuates. RMB has been, relative to many other currencies in the world, have not fluctuated that much. Except that when it does move, the movement direction of movement is quite clear. So it rose for a couple of years, and then the last, what, two, three years have been. And the waning. movement is clear that it's the downtrend. For the time being. Mm. You never know when it's going to turn back up. When do you think it's going to turn back up? I'm not a speculator. Uh, I'm not a gambler. I don't know. Well, the PBOC has been clear this week that they're uh, trying to stabilize the yuan at least. Um, Chinese regulators, Chinese government, Xi Jinping being here, really all very strong symbols of Chinese rule um, and, and how it does business. Where do you think Hong Kong factors into the thinking of China? Let's put it this way. China is 1.373 billion people. Hong Kong is 7.3 million people. Size matters. Uh, I'm a smaller guy. I walk into a room, nobody notices. If I'm Yao Ming, the basketball player, I walk into a room, everybody notices. And so when mainland China walks in, everybody notices. And Hong Kong will do well to recognize our position vis-a-vis -vis mainland China. Yeah, but 20 years ago, Hong Kong was a fifth of China's GDP. Today, it still, you know, hits above its weight a little bit, 3% of China's GDP. Well, that is not because Hong Kong has fallen, it's that because mainland has grown a lot faster, which is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Mm. And the gap will only continue. As a small guy, I always know how to exploit opportunities. Where's the next I mean, opportunity? Physically. In, the, in, in the case of Hong Kong, same thing. Being small, we can be very nimble. There's a lot of things that big guys cannot do, so it needs people like Hong Kong. And so Hong Kong will thrive. I don't see Hong Kong getting into trouble at all. Let's talk about the opportunities in China as well, because we have breaking lines out of Premier Li Keqiang saying that China should attach importance to foreign direct investment uh, falling this year, that China must boost confidence of overseas and domestic investors, and that the country must also consolidate economic stabilization and improvement. Given what you're seeing, foot traffic in your Chinese shopping malls, your business in China, where is the economy at right now? Oh, definitely has been recovering. I started writing about it a year ago, 
And by six months ago, it became much more clear. And today, I think it's uh, almost beyond a doubt that um, the consumer spending is recovering, led by actually the luxury sector. In the last four or five years, the down movement, downward movement was led also by the luxury sector. Now they're taking off. Uh, our properties in Shanghai, for example, Plaza 66, have been growing, uh, the, yeah. the sales have been growing at 20 some percent. Does that mean we should expect an uptick in revenue from property leasing in China? Rental always lag behind the sales of our tenants. Sales of tenants have grown up, have been growing up very healthily, especially the luxury sector. Rents will follow, perhaps not within a year, six months, a year or even 18 months because we are tied down by leases, which is, you know, three year long, for example. Mm -hmm. So it, it will lag behind a little, but as long as the economy continues to go, as long as consumption begins to move up, rent will follow. All right, finally, you are a proponent of one country, two systems. You remarked on uh, the Gini coefficient is not necessarily uh, being uh, an accurate reflection, but you just look at the people on the street, they're angry. How do you respond? Well, I think the last administration uh, did not sell land. And for bad reasons did they not sell land. Sometimes it's, there are reason, acceptable reasons, uh, misjudgment. Uh, but I don't think that was the case. It was a bad reason for mm. uh, not selling land for too long. Yeah.